same bag once we see who are cyanotic and have to come Okay? There are also two types of acne, central and obstructive. When we say central, there is absence of breathing because the brain doesn't breathe, doesn't tell the body to breathe. What obstruction is, there is an echo, but there is an obstruction. Usually, central sleep acne is seen in change stokes respiration. Okay? This is a very common disease. 2% in women and 4% of men. Age between 30 to 60 years old, that's how frequent it is. It is as common as asthma. Unfortunately, not well recognized, and only recently in the United States where they have not started noticing this. In the Philippines, there's still a lot of education that needs to be done. Okay? And the epidemia seems to be similar to Americans and to Asians. Asians are at risk for some other reason, and we'll talk about it not only because of weight. Okay. Most people with obstructive sleep apnea will have snoring, and usually they are very large, loud snorers. Okay. This is from Harrison's, just to go through the pathophysiology of obstructive sleep apnea. So somebody goes to sleep, because of the obstruction, he goes into apnea, causes a decrease in your oxygen, increase in your carbon dioxide, a decrease in your pH. Because the oxygen drops, it causes you to wake up. So mama na pico pa. Okay? So we only say in about three seconds, my core is just enough to breathe. Then they go to sleep again, start snoring, stop breathing. Okay? Then resumption of air flow return to sleep. So what happens? Because there is frequent arousal from sleep, what happens is there is cerebral dysregulation loss of deep sleep fragmentation, excessive motor activity. So when you talk about that, you're not able to go into your cycles of sleep. You're not able to go to one, two, three, four, and ramp. Most of the patients with obstructive sleep apnea just stays in the one and two. So that is the reason why they may have good quantity sleep, but they have poor quality sleep. So when you sleep apnea, patul ko na rin, matuong na siya, pero bisa matuong na lang sa oras, pag mata, Okay, they are not able to go into the restorative type of sleep. Okay? Maglabad na lang, oh, hindi niya katulog niya po. So what happens is you can have mood disturbances, cognitive dysfunction, performance, performance deficits, not only in the brain, but physically and all types, which also causes impotence, memory loss, personality disturbances. Okay? And the excessive daytime sleepiness can actually lead to more accidents. They have found it is the second most common cause of accidents in the United States next to Okay? Okay, let's talk about the other physiological consequences. So usually these things here occur when it's really bad. But these things here have done to show up as well as a big problem that we should probably try to treat this even if it's early. So because of the swings in your oxygen, carbon dioxide, and the pH, there's a decrease in your pleural pressure, increased cardiac afterload, causing left heart failure. So actually the left heart failure could get worse if you have patients with obstructive sleep apnea. It causes vagal bradycardia, ectopic cardiac deaths, and causes an explain of coronavirus. Makalito pa kayo. Ito lagi mo sa'yo, refer mo, hina yung heart. Yung pwede, kiba pa, sometimes we get so scared in sleep club, we wake them up. Okay, mag-detox sa, sa monitor. At this has been happening probably every night in the SRT annual. No? Pulmonary vasoconstriction causes their heart failure. And the other thing as well, because in most instances when we go to sleep, our blood pressure will drop. But because of this increase in pathetic drive, there's actually an increase in your blood pressure when you go to sleep and eventually leads to systemic hypertension. And the CO2 retention can cause chronic hyperventilation. Several studies have looked into the association of hypertension and obstructive sleep apnea, and it is definite. It has been proven that OSA can lead to hypertension. These are the four major prospective studies looking into the physiology of sleep and hypertension. Okay? And what we found, all controlled for body mass index smoking in two weeks. So, you know, they have a tambok on their mouth, so they see acne. So, they control for the weight, they control for the smoking, they control for the alcohol. They also control for cholesterol and blood gases, even for waist circumferences and exercises. 
and what we found out that if you have sleep apnea, it increases your chance of developing hypertension. If AHIO 15 is considered mild, 5 is normal, so even immunotics is going up. Okay. So the risk of hypertension rises linearly with the apnea hypopnea index, which is the severity of the sleep apnea. So even low levels of sleep day, disordered breathing increases the risk of hypertension. Effects are usually more pronounced under 50. Siyempre baka ang time to develop hypertension. Each 10 event per hour of HI increases the blood pressure by 11%, and OSA roughly doubles the risk of hypertension. This is the GNC7 report, which was we talked about earlier, maybe. Okay. So the identified cause of hypertension, technically we're so common, we're so frequent that uh, if somebody comes to us who's young with hypertension, what we do is we work after all these things. But the question you should ask is, Mohako Bakagai? Mohako, what we do is we do That will be the other question. Okay. So that's the only screening question you need to ask. So these are the other causes that we see, cyclical body, tachycardia, sudden death, blood pressure, hypertension. Contrary to most of it, OSA as well only leads to malformed hypertension, using the severe feminine hypoxic, then an obesity hyperventilation syndrome. So how serious is it happening? You can't get away from sleep because your husband is snoring his head off. What's the real danger here? The studies have shown that if you have obstructive sleep apnea and you do not treat it, the chance of you dying increases. Okay? So, dili ka kayo. Kapulgol ka, mahay blood ka, mas mga matay ka rin ka. This is based on several papers. 40% of patients with OSA died the following up of earlier than 8 years. Long-term outcome for OSA. Age of drastic alteration mortality was 4.9. Mortality in sleep apnea, multivariate analysis of risk factors in 16.2 patients observed with second mortality ratio was 3.33. Increases your death and your chance of dying equal. Okay? If you treat it by using CPAP, which was published in 2005 inches, there is definitely improvement in your mortality. So these are the patients who have sleep apnea who only use the treatment for less than one hour. So in 84 months, 40% died. But if they use their CPAP or their treatment, their mortality was actually improved, or their survival improved. One of the things that we'll notice as well is the death seems to come from cardiovascular events. Most of the deaths come from cardiovascular events. Okay? So this is another paper that showed in 2005, long-term effects of nasal CPAP. So if you treat your, your sleep apnea, your sleep apnea improves. Long-term cardiovascular outcomes in men with obstructive sleep apnea with or without treatment with CPAP. Okay. 